This is BBC One. We pause now with the rest of the United Kingdom and Europe to reflect on the week's events in America. David Dimbleby is in London. The by now sickeningly familiar pictures of a world obliterated, a scene of total devastation, of dust-covered rubble and twisted steel, the tomb of several thousand men, women and children. Only three days ago they shared the noisy, vibrant life of this city and then they were extinguished. The first reactions were shock and disbelief and rage. But today they're being mourned in the United States, across Europe and here in Britain. There'll be services of remembrance and at 11 o'clock, three minutes silence will be observed. At St Paul's, which has so often been at the heart of the nation's celebrations as of its morning, there'll be a service of remembrance with the American community, requested by the American ambassador and attended by, among others, many Americans who live here in London and people from city firms who had colleagues working in the two towers of the World Trade Center, many of them who have lost members of their families or friends or colleagues. The Prime Minister will be here, the representatives of many faiths, and leading the morning, the Queen. She arrived back in London from Balmoral yesterday afternoon and went to Buckingham Palace and had an immediate meeting with the American ambassador to offer the country's condolences. And at Westminster, the House of Commons have broken their recess a month early for a special session. They heard a statement earlier this morning from the Prime Minister and a reply from the new leader of the opposition. And their business will be suspended for the three minutes silence as will life throughout the United Kingdom, in Edinburgh, where the castle standard is flying at half-mast. In Liverpool, the port which has a special significance for the United States, the Liver building where so many immigrants once set sail for a new life of hope and energy and enthusiasm across the Atlantic. In Belfast, at the City Hall, where a crowd has already gathered and where there must be a special understanding of the horrors that terrorism visits on the families it touches. In Cardiff, at the Cenotaph in Cate's Park, people already gathering there for the three-minute silence at 11 and in offices and in schools throughout the country. The silence will also be observed. At Wyndham College in Norwich, one of thousands of schools which will be waiting to observe this silence. And all over Europe at midday their time, the silence will be observed. Chris Patton on the left there at Brussels uh, where the idea of this tribute was agreed yesterday. And in St. Paul's Cathedral, the seats are already filled with many special guests from the city, many invited guests, but also members of the public who just queued up and came flooding in here half an hour ago when the doors opened. We're waiting for Big Ben to strike 11, as we remember all those killed in the terrorist attacks on Tuesday, among them thousands of American citizens and hundreds of our own. In Grosvenor Square, a large crowd assembled round the statue of President Roosevelt. American citizens, expatriates, some of them visitors to Britain.
and as Big Ben strikes, we remember the event three days ago which brought a great city and country to its knees. Three minutes of silence, a small tribute perhaps to the grief of thousands of families whose lives were destroyed by the events of Tuesday the 11th of September, a day, as President Roosevelt said of that attack on Pearl Harbor many years ago, a day which will live in infamy. Here inside St. Paul's Cathedral, there was a silence so profound you could hear no one cough, no one move as the three minutes was marked. But this congregation here is preparing for a service which we'll be broadcasting 40 minutes from now. St. Paul's at the heart of the city of London, at the heart of the devastation of the Blitz in the Second World War. New York experienced what this city of London or the city of Coventry or Dresden in Germany experienced during that war, but all compressed like some vision of hell into one single day, a day of dread and terror and misery and panic, a day for courage and fortitude. When the news first broke, the world was 
aghast at these scenes, which seemed to mimic a disaster film until gradually it dawned this was real, that thousands of people were trapped and crushed as those towers crashed to the ground. And we now know even more hideous detail from the stories that are coming through of friends and families of these people here in the Cathedral of St. Paul's today who were able to talk to their wives or their children or to send messages as they faced certain death. Will be able to separate us. In Belfast, a service taking place and there are services throughout Europe and later today in the United States where President Bush will be attending a service in Washington and then going for the first time since the tragedy to New York. And here in St. Paul's, the Archbishop of Canterbury will be speaking, the American ambassador will be reading a lesson, and a 17-year-old American girl will light a special candle. What we're remembering here today is a horror deliberately unleashed, a senseless horror to everybody except the people who unleashed it and whose identity, of course, we still don't know. But we'll be back here at 10 to 12 on BBC One for the service of remembrance. This is BBC One. Now the news with Anna Ford. Good morning. 800 million people in over 40 countries around Europe have just held a three-minute silence to commemorate the terrorist attacks in the United States last Tuesday. The death toll in America still appears to be in the region of 5,000 people with citizens of many nationalities, including around 500 Britons amongst the casualties. At Heathrow Airport in London, thousands of staff and travellers stood in silence at 11 o'clock. And outside the United States Embassy in central London, there were many Americans amongst the crowds who paid their respects. And the three-minute silence was also observed at Westminster, where both Houses of Parliament have been recalled for an emergency debate on the attacks in America. It's the first time since 1998 that Parliament has been reassembled for such a debate. Our political correspondent, Carol Walker, joins us from Westminster. Carol, tell us about the mood in Parliament this morning. Well, as you would expect, Anna, it was sombre indeed, grim faces on all sides, many wearing black ties. And there was also a remarkable degree of unity and consensus across the House. Of course, in condemning what has happened in the United States, in sending condolences, but in the need for Britain to stand alongside America. And the Prime Minister said that Britain had not only an interest, but an obligation in helping the United States to track down and bring to account those responsible for what he described as a tragedy of epoch-making proportions. What happened in the United States on Tuesday was an act of wickedness for which there can be no justification. Whatever the cause, whatever the perversion of religious feeling, whatever the political belief, to inflict such terror on the world, to take the lives of so many innocent and defenseless men, women and children can never ever be justified. And of course, Carol, it was Ian Duncan Smith's debut as leader of the Conservative Party. Yes, and I think a dignified and statesmanlike beginning to his leadership. Um, Ian Duncan Smith expressed his full support for the Prime Minister and his pledge to stand shoulder to shoulder with the United States. He went even further than the Prime Minister in saying that he agreed with President Bush that this was an act of war and he insisted that Britain should remain resolute in and unflinching in its support for its old ally and friend. We come together united in this House in our determination not just to extend our genuine and heartfelt sympathy for the United States, but also to defend the civilized values against those who seek to bring them down by violence. 
Carl, was there any indication in the debate, very briefly, as to what sort of action the government might be taking or sanctioning? There were no specifics. I think at this stage, perhaps you wouldn't expect politicians to be going into any details when clearly the military planning is still at a very early stage. But I think it can be left in no doubt at all that uh, the Prime Minister, the Labour government, is prepared to put some military muscle behind those pledges to give all support possible to the United States. Carl, thank you very much. Today will also be a national day of prayer and remembrance in the United States. President Bush will attend a memorial service in Washington. Then he'll travel to New York to visit the scene of devastation in Manhattan, left by the two terrorist attacks on the World Trade Center. The president will see for himself the immense problems facing the rescue teams, which were hampered overnight by heavy rain. No more survivors have been found. Investigators in Washington say they've located both black box flight recorders from the plane which struck the Pentagon. So far, 5,000 people have been confirmed missing or dead. Police have reportedly arrested 10 people at Kennedy and LaGuardia airports in New York, including one with a false pilot's license. Afghanistan has denied that the man named as the chief suspect, Osama bin Laden, was behind Tuesday's attacks on the United States. The Taliban ambassador to Pakistan has said that neither the former Saudi nor Afghanistan itself had the capacity to train suicide pilots. The Taliban regime has been accused of sheltering bin Laden for several years. America said it's trying to persuade Pakistan to help if it chooses to strike at targets within neighboring Afghanistan. In the past few minutes, we've heard that police in Brussels have arrested two people. They've seized several weapons, including automatic guns. Security alerts in the United States are preventing air services from returning to normal. However, the first flight from America since air links were restored has landed at Heathrow. The U.S. authorities are only allowing a smaller number of flights of American and Canadian carriages to use their airspace. I'll be back with more news in half an hour's time. At 10 to 12 on BBC One, there will be live coverage of the Service of Remembrance from St. Paul's Cathedral. Hello there. Autumn has really taken a grip of our weather over the last week or so. It should feel a good deal better today, certainly in the south. Temperatures getting up to 18 or 19 degrees, feeling better because of lighter winds and certainly more in the way of sunshine to be had. Further north and west, the thicker cloud and outbreaks of rain spreading across Scotland and Northern Ireland through the afternoon. That band of rain will continue to slip its way southwards as we go through the night, eventually clearing away from the south first thing tomorrow morning, and then a cool weekend with a mixture of some sunshine, but also quite a few showers. Goodbye. Next on BBC One, David Dickinson's On a Bargain Hunt. It was like a dream come true for me. The archaeological discovery of a lifetime. Unique. This wasn't an ordinary mummy. She appeared to be a royal Persian princess. Priceless. I've come across figures for this $50 million, £35 million. But this mummy conceals a horrifying secret. Slowly, slowly, words were making sense to me. Of modern-day murder and conspiracy. It's immoral, it's unethical, it is illegal. Horizon reveals the extraordinary story of the mystery of the Persian mummy. Thursday at 9 on BBC Two. Your fight for survival starts now. Last week in Dog Eat Dog. <laughs> There's £10,000 up for grabs tonight. He's speechless. Dog Eat Dog continues tomorrow at 10 to 7 on BBC One. Are you ready? It's a Dog Eat Dog world. Tonight, the East End is the only place to be at 8. You OK? Why oh, shouldn't I be? I came here to put things right. Well, by snipe at Sharon. But it's not about her, is it? It's about you and me. By 8.30, it's back with the family. We have nothing in common. Yes, we do. Unless you want to bless me with a revelation that he's the love child of the fling you had for the village idiot. It's absolutely fabulous at 9. Why does everything you wear look like it's bearing a grudge, darling? <laughs> and at 9.30... Vinnie Jones bet he's here in Dublin, but Gary was in Belfast at the time. They think it's all over. Tennis rackets at dawn. It is now. Tonight on BBC One, worth staying in for. On BBC One Now, two teams and a race for bargains.